I'm a recovering meth addict and an alcoholic. I, I tried alcohol once when I was 13. We stole a bunch of champagne from the church down the street from my from our old house. And I got so drunk and I got so sick and I was like, oh, I never want to do that again. And then, <laughs> and when I, okay, when I was when I was 15, I had a I, I had a pet goat. My dad got me, and every day. When I'd get home from school, I'd take old Billy for a walk. I guess some cowboys that were upperclassmen at Central saw me walking Billy, and so they approached my dad with a gallon bottle of Jose Cuervo tequila. I got home from school one day, I'm like, Dad, have you seen Billy? I gotta take him for his walk. Oh, uh, oh, Pooh, can you come here? I need to talk to you. And he whips out this gallon bottle of tequila and sets it on his desk. And, it, and I'm like, but, uh, where's Billy? <laughs> and he's like, well, uh, you know those uh, cowboy fuckers you go to school with? Well, I got this for, for uh, Billy. <laughs> I was like, but I don't, I don't drink yet. And so he's like, it's okay, I'll hold on to it for you. Because he wasn't much of a liquor drinker, he was a beer drinker. And I finally asked him for it when I was like 19. I also discovered at an early age that tequila and Dr. Pepper, they don't combine well whatsoever, and it made me really sick. I poured out the rest of the tequila, and I didn't drink again until later on that same year. And then after that, it was like, oh, pff, well, I'm just gonna do this all the time then. Because, you know, I don't really have a problem with it. That was my dad. And my best friend introduced me to marijuana. To me, marijuana's never really felt like a gateway drug. No, I use it now medically, and I don't. I don't smoke weed to get high. I smoke weed to elevate myself, to bring myself up to a level to where I can perform at work, where I can do my job without pain, where I can do my job without things like anxiety and depression bringing me down. My mom has never drank, never smoked weed, never done drugs. I should have adopted her way of thinking a long, long time ago. The first time I tried meth, I thought it was like the best thing ever, you know, because I'd hallucinate with it, and I just thought it was really cool, and there, I didn't see how, how such great feeling could fuck up the rest of my life. Both of my brothers are alcoholics. I'm the tweaker of the house, so I, it turns me into a, a useless piece of sod that you probably would get more aware and use of in the, the floor of your car. Alcohol is truly more of a gateway drug than marijuana ever will be. Alcohol takes away all your rationality and common sense and inhibitions and things that, things that you are supposed to be afraid of are there for a reason. There's a reason you're supposed to fear God. I don't, personally. I never did. I denied him for a little bit. I thought, how could a God let stuff like starving kids in Africa and pedophiles in the Catholic Church happen? But, you know, I didn't care because I didn't think I was hurting anybody else because I didn't, I didn't see myself as an addict because I was so far in denial. Later on, when I was about 21, 22, I was drinking a lot, a lot of binge drinking. And I worked with my mom. We worked at Alamo Rent-A-Car. And that place was tweaker paradise. And everybody that I worked with, we were all using. And like a lot. Probably once an hour, go to the bathroom, chop a bunch of lines. We were lead service agents and you know, supervising and moving the people that clean the cars. I don't remember ever having to take a drug test there. I was doing it, they were doing it, you know, taking customer service calls on the phone. We were out in the field at like the different terminals in the airport, cleaning and moving the cars. You know, it seemed like a perfect fit to make the job easier and better, Yeah, and we do a much better job in taking Cadillacs through the car wash with the windows down. <laughs> Every time I brought a Cadillac through the car wash, I'm not sure why, but just Cadillacs specifically, but yeah, it happened a lot. Yeah, I was still in denial of the fact that I was even close to being a drug addict, because I'm like, drug addicts, they use needles, and I hadn't done that yet. I was going to school. When I was going to Phoenix College, I wore a hat 
a different hat every day to school to keep all the information in my head that I learned that day. My oldest son, Bentley, he was born December 2nd, 1998. He has saved my life every day since the day he was born, being who he is. I'm very proud of him. He found a broken pipe in the bathroom and clearly, of course, it was mine, but he asked me and I was like, yeah, that's mine. I've never lied to my kids. They've never lied to me. They've been for, as forthcoming and as honest as probably Abraham Lincoln. The, the seed was planted, but of course I didn't, I didn't read enough into it at that moment. The next week, he moved out of the house. And you know, my kids are beautiful and so well behaved and I don't, I don't want to see them struggle. I don't want to see them in pain. I don't want them to think, oh God, what's she gonna do now? I don't want to be the person that does that to, to anybody in my family. I was homeless for two years and I carried 12 backpacks, my guitar case, push a shopping cart, blah, 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 blah. And everything else, I carried my whole entire life with me around walking in the streets of Phoenix, trying to find a place to go. Once you're a mom, you're the only person that can take that away from you. And as soon as I realized that, it was like, no, no, I'm gonna hold on to it for dear life. Uh, yeah, I went through treatment at Crossroads last October. My mom was diagnosed with Alzheimer's last October. And she was like, well, I really want you to be one of my caregivers. And I was like, uh, <laughs> well, uh, in order to care for her the way that she's always cared for me, I had to learn how to do everything all over again. I was like a baby. And you know, I, when I went into rehab, <clears throat> I didn't have any preconceived notions, any absorbed everything that they told me, like a, like a giant sponge. And, and while I was there at Crossroads, I wrote a musical called Straight Out of Rehab and I'm very proud of it, and I'm trying to put it into production. I, I want to actually do it as a puppet production. My right, work has been such an important part in my recovery. We have live music there every night. Tonight's karaoke night, my personal favorite. I've been trying to figure out a way to put music to, my, to the songs in my play. There's 14 songs. 12 of them I wrote, and the other two are songs from a couple of local musician friends of mine. Uh, one, two of which who came in my Crossroads graduation, my friend Haley, who I'm going to see play tonight. She sang one of her songs, her song co called Get It Back With Me at our Crossroads graduation after the ceremony was over. And so that song's kind of my theme song, and I asked her if I could use it in the play, and she was like, oh my God, yes. The more positive self-talk I can, I can get in every day, the more time I can take to process when I encounter another person. Whether they're another addict who's needing help, or my mom, it's just depending you know, like, if uh, Alzheimer's is, is flaring up and it's affecting her a lot that day, it can be a lot to deal with. 467 days sober today. And, you know, uh, every day I learn something new about, like, I call them, I like to call them recovery discoveries. It's taken away any implement of doubt that they've had, and it's like, wow, is she really doing it? Is she really sober? Yes, she really is. You know, I'm on probation. I have a probation officer to report to. I have to call into Aver Health and report to task every day, find out if I need to go for testing or not. And these are things I don't mind doing. I'll pee in a cup 80 times a day if I have to. I can go on command, so it's really not that much of an issue. Eliminating doubt and to show people that don't know me, that just meet me, wow, this bullshit works? What, really, this works? I mean, look at me. 
This wouldn't have been me a year ago, and the support of my family and all my all my lovely friends and my my KWSS family, the greatest radio station in the world. No matter what happens, with the exception of a uh, head injury, either self-induced or otherwise, you still have that information in there. You still have the wits about you to be what you are. And just because you can't find it doesn't mean it's not still in here. I wore those hats every day to keep all that information in and to keep all the memory memories fresh of all these great bands, these great Arizona bands that I love, and I call them family too, to keep their the memories of being with them and enjoying their music and being out with friends, keep that fresh in my head and not focus my my life on futile things, things that I can't change, things that things that really really in the grand scheme of things don't matter to me. It's out of my hands, it's over my head. I don't if I can't eat it, fuck it or wear it, I don't need it. I'm not as content as I could be, but I have places to go. I know where I need to be. I'll go where I need to go, but I won't go where I'm not wanted. You know, people don't take the time to appreciate my way of thinking, that's fine. I can't let what they think or don't think of me affect what I'm doing on a day-to-day -day basis. If you want what I have, do what I do. Don't be jealous of me. Don't hate others for wanting to be like me. Live your life and enjoy those moments, one at a time and collectively have it all bring people together in a more positive sense. Detox to Rehab wants to help as many people as possible and do it the right way. Please subscribe, comment, and like our channel. Thank you for watching.